Wrestlers aren't necessarily candid types. By definition, they lie, and it is incumbent on them to lie. They want you to think that they really hate the storyline rival. They'll say they're a few inches taller than they are, and they'll say they weigh a couple of pounds heavier than they do. This is undermined by shoot interviews and podcasts. There, a wrestler will talk far more freely about, well, anything. So, I'm Andrew from What Culture Wrestling, and here are 10 absolutely wild confessions that wrestlers have made over the years. Number 10. The Undertaker confesses his love live at the Slammy Awards. The Undertaker was all about protecting his pro wrestling persona, which he rarely, if ever, broke. Of course, that has to be said in the past tense these days because, well, the dead man thought admitting to being old and terrible for the last however many years of his career made for compelling, critically acclaimed Netflix style documentary series. Did you know that Taker broke character years and years before he hilariously clawed for an Emmy? At the 1996 Slammy Awards, The Undertaker sent a coded message to his wife at the time. JLC, he said, you are always on my mind. You see, JLC equals Jody Lynn Calloway. So, why did he say this? Was Taker apologising for a bit of on the road how's your father? Or was he just being a big old soppy bollocks and telling his missus that he adored her in between working the Executioner and Tatanka? Number 9. CM Punk admits to an in-ring accident. Soiling yourself is quite the embarrassment. Well. That's at least what I'm told. It's not something a high profile wrestler who takes themselves extremely seriously would readily admit to, but 2013 was a very different time. And CM Punk, he was in a very different place. Punk had stopped giving a damn a long time prior to December, when in the middle of a match with Dean Ambrose, he filled his britches on an episode of WWE Smackdown. Constantly ill and unable to locate any motivation due to the grueling schedule he was working, CM CM Punk not only did that act involuntarily, but advertised that fact to the world. He was scolded by WWE management for tweeting the S word, because swearing is clearly unacceptable on a platform that children should not have unmonitored access to, and is obviously much worse than operating a company that for so long has struggled to genuinely care about workers' rights. Number 8. Marty Jannetty admits to an unspeakable act. Firstly, Marty Jannetty claimed in the aftermath of this outrageous story that his Twitter account had been hacked. Nobody will ever know for sure, but this hacker positively nailed Jannetty's uniquely bizarre writing style. Marty is fond of ellipses, multiple exclamation marks, and adding or removing certain letters from words incorrectly. For example, he will write loves instead of love. He does this often, as you'll find out here. And the person hacking Marty Jannetty's account was as good at mimicry as the young bucks are of ducking FTR. So, back in 2017, a hacker convinced the world that Marty Jannetty lived out the Mr. McMahon character's sickest dream that he had designs on his own daughter. As the hacker said on Twitter, if you loves me as much as I loves you, you will give your opinion. Just did DNA two weeks ago. She's not my daughter. We both held out of sex because you don't do that. But now that we ain't, from a guy's side, she's effing hot. But she's been daughter. I want to too, but can't get past that. Uh -huh. The worrying part here is that in the hacker's sick mind, Marty Jannetty had urges towards his not daughter before he even had it confirmed that he wasn't related to this young woman. Number seven, Marty Jannetty also claims to have killed somebody. Taken to Facebook in 2020, Marty Jannetty claimed to have committed murder in self-defense. According to his story, a 13-year-old Jannetty was lured out the back of a bowling alley under the pretense of buying drugs. Sensing an imminent assault, Marty revealed that he made his first victim disappear. So, in effect, Jannetty outed himself as a serial killer, as the implication here is that this was just the first person that Marty had offed. Jannetty reckons that while the man was never found, they should have checked the Chattahoochee River that straddles the border of Georgia and Alabama. These ramblings sparked a manhunt, which in turn compelled Jannetty to reveal that he just made the whole thing up. It was obviously BS. After all, a wrestling serial killer with a penchant for wild sex? What is this? NXT when it was supposedly still good? Jannetty later claimed that this original post was merely the beginning of a damn wrestling storyline. 
time, because of course it was. Number 6. John Cena's TMI moment on The Howard Stern Show. In 2006, as WWE Champion Deep in the Ruthless Aggression Era, Cena was encouraged to publicise himself as a bit of a lad. As part of this top boy PR crusade, John made an appearance on The Howard Stern Show. And there, he told the world of his rat up a drainpipe sexcapades. Ironically, given the fact that WWE launched its PG initiative to move away from this sort of thing, Cena conducted himself rather well here. Stern was operating in his typical unpleasant manner, trying to get Cena to admit to his shame in sleeping with a larger lady. But Cena was having none of it. To him, it was a great night, lights on, great experience. Stern then tried to frame such an ad as disgusting, but Cena was nonplussed. So, nothing shameful here, it's just wild that footage exists of the child-friendly Super Cena copping to being a prolific shagger. Instead, the only thing John Cena should be ashamed of, it's that STF, John Boy. Number 5. New Jack claims he wanted to badly injure Vic Grimes. The story is, New Jack never forgot the events of ECW Living Dangerously 2000, at which he suffered brain damage when Vic Grimes fell on top of Jack after Grimes was dragged into a balcony dive spot that he was trepidatious about. Two years later, when the rancid XPW attempted to reboot the essence of Paul Heyman's extreme outfit, New Jack sought his revenge. In the 2005 documentary, Hardcore Forever and later repeated on Dark Side of the Ring, New Jack claimed that he wanted to kill Vic Grimes by throwing him headfirst into the top turnbuckle and this throw would take place from the top of a scaffold and through a ludicrous amount of tables. Unfortunately, there are plenty of holes to all of this. Firstly, New Jack and Vic Grimes worked without incident together at Hardcore Heaven 2000, just months after the initial incident at Living Dangerously. Secondly, New Jack didn't really throw Grimes with too much force in 2002. He claims this was an accident and that he meant to do it harder though. And three, New Jack is a professional wrestler. If nothing else, it's a wild thing to even try and incorporate as part of a work or a storyline that, you know, you're trying to murder somebody. Number four. Brian Danielson lies about his concussion history. Brian Danielson is a self effacing fella who, by the standards of pro wrestling, is probably too honest for his own good. When asked by the Gorilla Position podcast in 2018 if he could see his program with The Miz lasting until WrestleMania 35, Brian laughed in their face. Brian Danielson, however, is a professional wrestler. Lying is in his DNA. He admits to lying to WWE about his history of concussion before signing with the company, which he then attributes to WWE's fear of clearing him in those wilderness years between 2016 and 2018. Number 3. Cody Rhodes takes responsibility for toxic tribalism. You think that thing that happened in WWE was bad? What if it happened in AEW, huh? Bet you'd love that. Yeah, you'd absolutely eat it up if it happened in AEW, wouldn't you? Yeesh. The online wrestling fan experience is exhausting post-2019. Then again, it's never been especially great. You couldn't rate a WWE match three and a half stars, as in very good, without some demented fan wishing death upon you and your family for not giving it five stars, which obviously you definitely would had it taken place in the Tokyo Dome. But online discourse is so much worse these days. Now, we all live in hell, the new 10th circle of which is bonkers theories such as Tony Khan must have leaked the Vince McMahon sex scandal in order to deflect attention from Jeff Hardy's deal. UI arrest. You can't even browse Twitter for more than a minute before somebody will take a shot at you if you dare to say a nice thing about WWE, AEW, or say New Japan Pro Wrestling. I can put some of the blame on my shoulders for this, Cody Rhodes acknowledged on After the Bell with Corey Graves. Why would Cody do this to himself? Number 2. Vince McMahon publicly admits wrestling is predetermined. Many words describe McMahon. Genius. Moron. Entertaining, repulsive, bold is as accurate a word as any, and Vince embodied this characteristic in 1989 when, in front of the New Jersey Senate, he said the obvious part loudly and made public the fact that wrestling was predetermined. His timing was ideal, not that he was interested in doing anything else except paying less tax, as of course, by 1989, there were barely any competitors left to piss off. Vince had won. 
Most everybody knew that wrestling wasn't on the level in 1989. Still, it's wild that Vince thought nothing of ruining any remaining urge to bargain to the contrary, just to save himself a few quid. Number one, two words. Vince McMahon has two words for you. No, it's not paralegal payout. Instead, those two words are public relations. Upon questioning by the House Subcommittee on Commerce, Trade and Consumer Protection and the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform in 2007, Vince revealed that he only extends the offer of paid rehabilitation to any past or present independent contractors for the purpose of optics. McMahon, and this is a quote, does not feel any sense of responsibility for anyone of whatever their age is who has passed along and has bad habits and overdoses for drugs. Sorry, I don't feel any responsibility for that. Nonetheless, that's why we're doing it. It is magnanimous gesture. A magnanimous gesture, come on Vince. For obvious reasons, McMahon was extremely careful not to admit any culpability for the grim epidemic of untimely death that played pro wrestling in the 1990s and 2000s. But in doing so, McMahon had to willingly depict himself as a man transparently attempting to clean up his company's rotten public image. So, that brings our list of bold wrestler confessions to a close. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share, turn those notification bells on, and come and give us a follow over at WhatCultureWB on the Twitter. While you're there, you can find myself on Twitter, at CulturedLeftPeg. Most importantly, whatever you're doing today, whether it's something, whether it's nothing, I hope you have the best possible day. And if things aren't going so well, I really hope things turn around for you as soon as possible. I've been Andrew Pollard from WhatCulture Wrestling, and I'll catch you down the line.